Welcome to Success Connect 2015. I'm Darren Kagan. Our guest is Jonathan Tager. He is CEO of GroupElephant.com. Jonathan, welcome. Thanks for being here with us. Thank you very much for having me. GroupElephant.com is a relatively new name for a company that some might be more familiar with as EPIUS. That's right. Uh, EPIUS has been around for 30 some years, GroupElephant.com for less than a year. But we had uh, outgrown the EPIUS group of, of companies description because of the proliferation of different brands and businesses. So we, uh, we gave it a new group identity, GroupElephant.com, brand new, and it subsumes EPUs and, uh, and other brands as well. And EPUs does what? EPUs is uh, arguably the, the leading expert in the area of uh, core HR and payroll in the SAP slash success factors environment in the world. Um, and then you had a, a bigger vision of what it could be um, beyond just a company, a company beyond purpose. Exactly. We wanted to do something about the uh, the problem of, uh, of elephants and rhinos and the slaughter taking place, and we didn't want to rely on conventional charities because we didn't have a great deal of, uh, of confidence in them. So we, we we repurposed, if you like. We we made ourselves about beyond corporate purpose, and uh, we literally do that. We go beyond just day-to-day -day corporate activities in our everyday work, and uh, the. The, the business model attracted some academic interest as well. It's going to be taught as a case study at the uh, UC Berkeley Business mm -hmm. School in the spring of 2016 semester. So there's a sort of a corporate social responsibility slash social entrepreneurship and also a business model innovation element to it that is somewhat different. It may not be unique, but it, it's certainly highly differentiated. Because there's plenty of companies and corporations that have social responsibility, that have that little section. So what's different about what you're setting up? We say that this quite uh, pointedly is not a corporate social responsibility program. That for me means it's something that we do in our spare time. This is part of our day-to-day -day activity. Um, my day and the day of many other people around the world involves business work and then spliced into the middle of that some activity that may be involved with um, an elephant that's about to be shot in a private game reserve in South Africa and we'll get all hands on deck and cause a media storm and get that life saved and we've done exactly that kind of thing but it's quite usual for that to be part of our day-to-day -day activity. So not just about funneling some dollars, actually allotting time in the day and resources of the company for this cause. Exactly and I would say that you know the one thing that's attracted me uh, throughout my 15 to 16 odd years at the helm of the group is the breathtaking ability to execute of, of my colleagues. And those, those are the self-same people who are now applying that ability to execute into areas which traditionally would be done by a non-profit. It would be underfunded. It would be somewhat disorganized. So that business discipline has been carried over with some of the, uh, the people in the group who are heavily involved in the day-to-day -day activities of it. But it hasn't taken them away from what they do in terms of their normal activity. It's how, just how part it of not? their day. Ironically, it's actually landed up with uh, a, a renewed energy for their day-to-day -day work. I haven't come across anybody who I felt doesn't have their eye on the ball. And uh, if anything, they're doing what they used to do better, and they have time. Though, you know, those that have the uh, inclination towards doing it. There are others in our business who aren't involved day-to-day. -day. The beauty of the model is that every chargeable hour, every dollar of revenue that's generated by somebody in our group is indirectly going towards the saving of elephants and rhinos and the alleviation of poverty. And that's a very powerful message. And the same applies to our clients. It's not an elective add-on. We take out of our revenues, but every client doing business with us is actually contributing indirectly to the resolution of this problem. So if you're not interested in that and supporting that, then maybe they don't want to hire you and you're okay with that. Uh, that's who you want to work with. Is exactly. Well, exactly. But the point is uh, whether they, what, it's not about an elective add-on. We we'll, right. we'll take it out of our revenues and for those that it appeals to uh, and would support us uh, in any event or over and above that in any event decision, we're grateful for the business one way or the other. When you made this transition of what the company and how it's set up, did you find you changed who you work with in terms of some people who were there that wasn't going to fit and you then attracted other people? We've certainly attracted people who've been, not only have we attracted people uh, in our acquisition program, we've attracted businesses that have been particularly interested where you have a discussion about basic business principles and you feel you're walking through treacle with them. And then when you start having a discussion about this and they're animated about it, it changes the dynamic of the discussion completely. We certainly haven't lost anybody, but the 
point that, um, that, I, that, I, that I want to make about this is that because of the diversity of our, uh, uh, the nature of the people that work for us, uh, we cater for the full spectrum of interventions in this area. The animal rights agenda, right through to the conservation agenda, which is more concerned about saving the species rather than the life of an individual creature. And all of those people in the business are highly focused on doing this. And I think that that diversity has made us a whole lot more stronger than a conventional nonprofit which will make a sort of a philosophical declaration and it will attract people who are that way inclined and nobody else. So it's, this is me, this is what I believe in, and if you don't believe it, you're a heretic. That isn't the way it works with us at all. We have this diversity, and I think that's made us incredibly strong in our cause. So the question that we could talk for hours and hours about, but we'll try to condense, why elephants and rhinos? The reality is that I'm deeply concerned about all creatures, but we felt that a sort of a save the planet approach would water down the potency of it. So elephants and rhinos creates the focal point, the, juxta the juxtaposition of the E and the R with a P because of what the strategy is, uh, just redefined ERP for us. So it's a, it's a focal point. Think of it as being a, a photograph with all sorts of other components in it aquatic creatures, all sorts of other, other, other creatures which are very much important to us, but we needed that focal point, and the focal point is elephants and rhinos. And the way that the business model has been architected, it's beyond corporate purpose, elephants, rhinos, and people. If the day comes and we, and hopefully it will, when we prevail, whales, sharks, and dolphins may be our next cause, it's all gonna be part of beyond corporate purpose. Elephants, rhinos, and people, if we prevail, in the words of Winston Churchill, won't be the end, it won't even be the beginning of the end, it may be the end of the beginning for us. And I wish you well with that. Thank Fantastic you very much. Cause. Jonathan Tager, thank you, CEO of GroupElephant.com. Thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you very much. Just stay there one second.